Today I want to show you how to install a really cheap and easy mod. Now I placed a parts order for our workshop with Mojo Tone, they're one of our parts suppliers, and I noticed that they're selling these pedal kits, and I was like, oh, let's check these out. I got a couple of the different kits in, and this particular one, the BBOD, this one right here, is based on a Marshall Blues Breaker, but this particular pedal kit has a bit of a secret. Now apart from being one of the easiest pedal kits I think I've ever built in my life, I think it took around half an hour to put this thing together, they've actually set this up perfectly to be modified into a King of Tone because they've included all the extra circuitry that the King of Tone needs. I'm just going to show you a quick demo of what this actually sounds like. Now if you've never used a King of Tone before, please keep watching because I'm going to give you some really good tips on how to use these. They don't work like your typical overdrive pedal. And in this upcoming clip, just listen to the dynamics, listen to the note separation, the compression on the attack, the way the notes decay. They're all like the signature hallmarks of a really good King of Tone. Another really important thing to do is to subscribe to this channel because if you subscribe it helps get these videos out to more people and that's really what I'm trying to do. It's nice to be playing to a big audience. If you're playing live shows and you're playing to lots of people it is so much more fun than if you're playing to two people and their dog. So <laughs> I've done that by the way. So please hit that subscribe button it really really helps. This is how these come so when you order them they come in like a little lunch box and inside everything's in its own little section so you've got a little sticker the enclosure all the parts you need now i have checked out a lot of king of tone style pedals like open them up for repairs things like that and they're often not accurate clones there's things that the little things that they've changed in the circuit and i'm guessing that's just to avoid any legal issues when you're modifying a kit like this it means a you know exactly what's gone into it and b you know that it's a super accurate version of the pedal you're trying to emulate, in this case a King of Tone. So the next step I'll just show you how to modify this PCB, all the different parts we need and where we need to solder them in. So I'm back ready to do this mod, the soldering iron's nice and hot, the camera's in the most awkward spot imagine what's pretty much exactly where I need to be to do this mod, but anyway we're just going to bash through it. So we've got a few components we need to change and almost all the components are going to be a 0805 package. Now I get a lot of these parts from Tata actually, Tata.com, they're a really really cool company and they're only around about two cents a component so yeah that's pretty cheap. You might have never soldered surface mount before and it can freak some people out the first time but it's actually easier than soldering through hole style so definitely don't worry about it, I'll show you how to pull the parts off and put new ones on, it's actually really easy. This is how we pull a part off, so our, our first part we're going to take off here is R3. So R3 is going to get replaced with a 27K. All the resistor numbers and values that they need to be changed to are down in the description by the way so you can go and check that out. So what I do is I put a little bit of solder on one side like so. hope that looks nice. Yep, cool. And then a little bit on the other side. Let that flux flow in. And then you just sort of go back and forth between each side and then it just pops off. Boom, easy as. So now we'll just look for our next one. We've got R4, that's going to be changed to a 33. So essentially we're only removing six components and we're changing the values of those and then we're adding one new component and that's it. The whole circuit is designed and set up perfectly to install a King of Tone mod. I kind of couldn't believe it really but it's well it would be the easiest way to get a King of Tone clone and a really good one of that, a really well built one, a really solid King of Tone that you could gig with and you could use on the road, you know, something that's sort of road worthy. First we're going to clean up these pads. This is going to be a little awkward on this side but anyway we'll see how we go. So what I do is I use this desoldering braid, might start here because it's the easiest, and you just put heat on the braid and it sort of sucks the solder or solder. Man how good was that? Cool, so I'm going to go around and clean up the rest of these pads. 
Okay, so to apply a little bit, a little bit of flux always helps. Get your component and position it. Okay, and now you just push on one side and then just do the same on the other side. And that's it. I normally just do a little touch again though. Kind of how I like to do it. Man, it's awkward around that camera. But anyway, that's how you solder it back on. That one actually looks pretty good. And now I'm just going to go through and do the rest of those. Now, R5, uh, you'll see there's two different values for that. You can use 1K. Now, that's the traditional low gain or normal version of the King of Tone. If you change that to a 100K resistor, it's a high gain version. On the King of Tone, the original design, there is an electrolytic capacitor in parallel with a film. I don't feel like it makes a massive difference, but we're going to put it in anyway. And if you want to, you just got to make sure you get the orientation of your capacitor correct. So I'm using an axial style one, and it's the second uh, lug across where the ribbon cable connects from this side, from the DC power side. So that's where your negative side of the capacitor is going to connect to. And the other side just connects to the center of where the volume of the center lug of the volume control so that's where that one goes if you want to add it if you want to be real nitpicky and 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 get it as accurate as you can here's the finished build now there's a couple of things i found make sure with these jacks down here you bend those legs coming through on the other side of this pcb bend them right over as flush as you can that helps everything fit together really well the other thing is i couldn't actually find a way of grounding the chassis uh, with the enclosure so what i did is i added a small wire here that's a ground point on the switchboard and i actually soldered it directly to the side of the switch itself so that way the, the chassis is actually grounded another thing uh, that i'd like to show you is with the bottom plates here always get like a six millimeter drill and scrape off a bit of the uh, powder coat because powder coat is essentially plastic it's ins it's an insulation and i get so many pedals in from so many different manufacturers that have problems with noise issues buzzing that sort of thing and quite often it's because this bottom plate is not grounded at all you've got quite a large area of the pedal where noise and other problems can get into the circuit depending on its environment so i always take off a bit of this insulation around these just around where the the screws go through and that solves that problem completely so something that you should do okay i've got a crazy sort of amp set up in the workshop i've got a switcher so let's just turn it on so to get this amp going fire on those controls there i've got to turn that switch that way that one goes that way right and i've got to turn this amp on here nice the aux goes on there we go nice the aux is on now make sure it's going out to the cab that way up to the aux there we go beauty now we can start Next, I do an initial startup test. So we're gonna make sure first that the bypass is working. I've got no power plugged in at the moment. So that means the bypass is working. Now the trick with this, to avoid damage, if you're ever um, building stuff or doing any DIY, this is the way I like to initially test any pedal is I turn it on. So we should have no sound now, which we don't. Then I just charge the power supply. So what I'm doing is I'm turning the power on to the power adapter pretty much and then I turn it off. So right now we've got the capacitors inside the power supply are fully charged. And that'll give a momentary amount of power, just a small amount of power. So when I plug this in, you'll see the light should come on. We should get some sound. There we go. And then it should die, right, pretty soon. Right, but that's just a safe way of knowing, hey, it works, it, it, everything's working and we nothing's gonna start smoking. But if you get no sound at that point, at least it's a lot safer than just having full power on. Right, so the next thing is, turning the power on and checking that all the controls work as they should so strumming your guitar gain is working nice tone is working yep the volume is good and this clip switch here so we're soft clipping the mod which will be which will be like a boosted sound so let's have a listen and then hard clipping be really hard to hear on camera actually the next step is actually the fun part which is she having a quick jam through it so let's just double check with a real guitar because you never know what's going to happen when you plug an actual guitar in
Man, that sounds that sounds and feels really, really cool. I can see why people really do love that King of Tone pedal. It's got a great feel under the fingers is probably the best way to describe it. The tone's great, but the actual way it responds to your playing is awesome. It's time to test this out. Now, if you've never used a King of Tone pedal before, uh, for a lot of people it can be a little bit of a jarring experience because it doesn't feel like the controls do a heck of a lot to begin with. Everyone's expecting like an overdrive pedal, like a typical overdrive. If I start with a fairly clean sound, quite a clean tone, and everything's set to noon, and if I turn it on, it doesn't, you can definitely feel the difference, but there's a little bit of a volume drop. Uh, and you'll find the gain control seems to not do a heck of a lot till you get to getting close to nine o'clock. Now that's totally normal for this. It's actually really, I think of it as like a duty compression knob. So as you turn it up, you can feel it getting more compressed. It's a real feel thing. And there is quite a bit of volume on tap once you get that gain up. And the tone control is pretty, pretty typical, but, but very musical. That's a full tone. That's all the way off. I have a hovering around the middle somewhere. The other cool thing about this kit is that it has the uh, King of Tone presence control actually already pre-installed inside, so you can fine tune that sizzly bacon top end um, to your liking, which is really, really cool. The other great thing is that the clipping diode switches, which are normally internal on a King of Tone, are actually sitting on the outside here, so you can select soft clipping, you can select boosted sound, and you can select hard clipping as well, which is seriously cool. So it gives you a lot of tone shaping options. But if I set the gain knob, like if I have it down here at about three o'clock, or in about, you know, a quarter, and then I slowly roll it up, that's about half, about 75% there, nine o'clock. That's when it starts to get into overdrive sound. And I find that's where it sort of, for me it feels to be somewhere around there anyway and then you set up the volume to taste. There's a decent amount of volume there. One really cool thing about this kit, and it's a mod that I would definitely make to a King of Tone, is that the volume control is actually a linear pot, not an audio pot. Now, what that does, it doesn't affect the sound at all, it just affects how the volume sort of comes in. And with a normal King of Tone, you find that you're always riding the volume extremely high, like 75% to full. With a linear pot, I find it just really opens up that scope, like really opens up the sweet spot of the volume control. So I've got the gain on about 75%, I've got the tone on about half, and I'm just pushing that volume just a touch. And that um, gives quite a nice overdrive sound, pretty much completely from the pedal itself. The amp's set fairly clean, so. Yeah, really, really cool tone. I really like that sound. So let's have a quick look at the types of clipping. So when the pedal is set low gain, you almost won't hear any difference between soft clipping, the mod, which is in this case gonna be the, the boosted sound, and hard clipping. But if I push the gain up to about 75% and then we just switch between them, so that's soft clipping. Mod's definitely gonna be louder because it's lifting all those diodes out of the circuit, so it's just straight, it's just like a straight op amp booster, but it does get dirty. And that's the op-amp clipping in there. Inside this is the JRC 4558D, which is kind of the tube screamer op-amp. Uh, slightly, slightly different from the one used in a real King of Tone, but um, as far as I've heard, almost no difference sonically. Same with the diodes. The diodes are actually slightly different as well, but no difference really when you are in the room with it. Then we've got hard clipping, so this is going to be a little quieter and way more saturated. So soft clipping. Mod and hard clipping. So I made a promise and I'm gonna keep it. So I told my eldest son who's 12 that if 
our channel got to 10,000 subs that I would give his channel a shout out. So he's called Coco MC. It's a really cool gaming channel. I'm really stoked with what he's doing. I'm really proud of what he's doing. He's putting a lot of work into getting his channel up and running. So if you know anyone that's into gaming or into Bed Wars, please check the links in the description. It's a really cool channel and definitely worth checking out. Now, if you don't want to stay on the like 800 year waiting list to get a real King of Tone, this is really honestly the next best thing. There are so many King of Tone clones out there, but you never really know how accurately they have been built. And this is a really, really accurate clone. It sounds and it feels to me just like a King of Tone. And it can be a really easy way for you to actually get into one and a really affordable way too. Plus fun, you get to build a kit. Um, and it's if you've never built a kit before, it's a real satisfying experience. And the, the fact that a lot of this has already been done for you means you can build it without sort of worrying you're gonna mess it up. There's not a lot to mess up. Check these out, I've got the links in the description for these kits, and I've also got all the different changes written down in the description too that you need to make. I really hope you guys have a crack at this, and if you do, please put it down in the comments if it was a successful build for you and if it went great. I mean, I'm sure it will. It's the really, really easy builds. I'm gonna have a look at some of their other pedal kits as well. Anyway guys, have a great week, and we'll catch you next time.